morning, good afternoon, I don't know, whatever time it is. Let's get out of here. We're going to go somewhere. I'm going to go to one of my favorite places. I'm going to go to this place. This is the American Museum of Natural History. I'm going to turn around. This is what's here. So this is the Hall of Ocean Life. And this is the first animal that you encounter. Um, animals at the American Museum of Natural History that you see in the dioramas are um, by far often preserved animals. So um, these animals were found in the wild. Um, they, sometimes they died of natural causes. Um, and they give visitors and even scientists a very uh, rare opportunity to look very, very closely at animals that they would not be able to get near in the wild. So this guy's super scary. Um, he is an elephant seal. They're named that because they kind of got like a trunk. And elephant seals live on, in the Pacific, like on the other side of the country, but on like the coast of our country. They get really, really big. So he can maybe weigh like 8,500 pounds. So this is maybe the closest that you'd be able to get to one and be able to look at, you know, what they look like and how do they stand and how do they move and stuff like that. So scientists can look at specimens like this and get ideas about stuff like that. Let's move around over here. Let's go this way. Over here we have a manatee. Manatees live in the mid-Atlantic and like around Florida and stuff and they like shallow water. They are mammals just like the elephant seal. They breathe air and manatees are endangered right now because the water that they swim in it's like I said very shallow and they eat all these grasses down here. Um, the boats that drive over top could hurt the manatee with the propellers so um, manatees have like a really hard time they're endangered I'm gonna spin around this is the whole hall and we're on the bottom floor of the hall it's actually a two-floor hall this is probably the most famous part of the whole um of this whole area of the museum this is the blue whale model this blue whale model uh, i'm going to give you the in real life statistics for the animal as well as the uh, measurements and stuff for the model for the the art so in real life um this animal is the largest animal that may ever have lived on earth it's larger than a titanosaur it's larger than any dinosaur um on average they're about um, 82 feet long and they can weigh about 100 tons um, this whale is not the average one so the way that the scientists came up with this particular model is they found a way like an older female that had beached herself so she was passing away and they measured her she weighed 90 she um she was 94 feet so this model is based on this whale that scientists found in 1925 and they made her longer than the average so she was like a larger male so the model is 94 feet but the model only weighs 10 tons, which is 10 tons, that's like a lot. But in real life, the whale would weigh like 120 tons. So the, the model is lighter than a real whale, but it's still super heavy. So a lot of people wonder like, how does it stay up there? There are supports all in here. And then um, the, where she bends, cause she's diving down, um, she's split in half, it's two pieces. So the front half is like 66 feet long and it's disconnected inside from the back half. So they're both held up by like really strong joists within that we can't see. And she's never gonna fall down. She's been there since 1969. Um, she gets vacuumed like with a real vacuum. A guy goes on a cherry picker, like a machine that lifts you up and they take a vacuum out and they vacuum the whale and clean her all the time. And um, so she doesn't get dusty. And um, there used to be another whale there, a blue whale, same kind of whale. Um, but it was much smaller. It was 76 feet long. And that one was made in 1907, but it wasn't as biologically correct as this whale. Um, it was completely straight. <clears throat> like it was like swimming like a bullet, like in a straight line. So this is more of a natural pose for her to be in. And um, she is a baleen whale. So all the different species of whale either got teeth or you don't. If you got teeth, you eat fish. But if you don't have teeth, you have baleen. So it's like a filter and you bring water in to your mouth. And then when you bring that water in, 
it brings in a whole bunch of um, smaller um, prey items like krill, like tiny, tiny little animals. And that's what she eats. So even though she's so large, she doesn't eat like fish or anything. She eats tiny, tiny little creatures. All right, let's move around. Let's see who's here. Oh, I'm not going to talk about these guys. They are walruses. They're very impressive. They have those tusks. They actually, um, they use those tusks to climb onto the ice. They use it to fight with each other, but they are actually really social animals. Um, they like, even if there's room, like you see back here in the, there are always like paintings behind the um, specimens and the dioramas. So you can see back here in the painting, there's a lot of room behind all the whales. They could spread out. They don't feel like it. They like to be close to each other. No whales. Let's see who else is here. We have, I'm going to talk about this guy. Um, this is the Sargasso Sea. So in the Sargasso Sea, there are these like clusters, I don't know, of floating algae. So it's like plants that flow in a mess, like a tangle. And all this stuff is happening inside the tangle of plants. So there's the loggerhead turtle and there you can't see them they're here i think i'm gonna superimpose a picture in here um there's a uh, portuguese man of war so we're like jellyfish um there's also large fish they're actually dolphin fish they're not dolphins they're fish but they're dolphin fish and they're all waiting for these tiny fish to get spooked and they're running after all these tiny fish so um the plants create almost like a floating mini forest in the water and then these predators can hunt around in there and the fish can maybe hide as well um, polar bear he's hunting we're not gonna talk about him these guys are deep sea diving in a reef and they are looking for pearls but I'm not gonna talk about that I'm gonna talk about this one let's see over here this is a two-story diorama i'm not going to go upstairs except for right now so this is this floor right and then there was stairs and stuff you saw when we were in that elevator this is the above so this is like the surface of the water right and then below us is this so i want to talk to you about this part um this is the andros coral reef it's in bahamas and um this was like a picture, like somebody took a picture of this place underwater in the 1920s. It was like a summer day, a June day. And then the artists and the scientists completely copied the photograph so that it was like a moment in time in this coral reef preserved like forever now. Um, it's amazing because uh, coral reefs are these environments that are seriously endangered. So having this glimpse into the Bahamas, into the ocean um, at this time, there is going to come a point where maybe we're not going to be able to see anything like that in nature anymore, but it'll still be in the museum. Um, this diorama, it, you would assume, because there's, there's like only tiny animals in here, like these fish are not preserved tiny fish, they're sculptures. Um, but they're are real specimens in the diorama and it's a lot of coral there's plants that are real in there so um, some of them are sculpted some of them were made by artists but other ones were preserved by scientists uh, dried out and used in the diorama the diorama was done over like renovated in 2003 and people actually like climbed in and um, touched up the specimens and made sure that they're in good condition and uh, repainted things that needed to be painted so it's a very special thing because this may not exist in real life anymore um, I'm gonna talk to you about this one I'm not gonna talk about anything practical so this room this room's like super old this room's from like I don't know like 18 blah blah but um, it was redone to become just like ocean stuff in 1969 when the museum turned a hundred now the museum, like last year, became 150. So um, this has been there my whole life, right? You can laugh at me. It's okay. So it didn't used to look like this. Um, now, I don't know why they did it. 
but I bet you it was because of people like, like, I don't know, I would not complain about it, but whatever, I don't know. So when I was your age and younger, whatever, um, there, there's no glass here. So if you want to get kicked out of the museum, you can literally climb over the fence and climb into the diorama and there's like rug inside there and you can walk around the sculpture. Um, don't do that because they will kick you out of the museum. But um, when I was young, there was no light in there. So now if you look, the squid, it's a giant squid, the squid and the whale look like purpley pink. When I was a kid, there was no light in there. So what it was, was a black box, like a, like a giant black box covered in glass. So you can't, like, if you try to shine a flashlight or, like, if you try to take a picture of it, the, the flash or the flashlight would um, bounce off the glass, the reflection. It would, like, blind you. You wouldn't be able to see anything. So what would happen is every kid would walk up to this enormous black box where you can't see anything, where there's no light. Get closer and closer and closer until you look inside and your eyes refocus and you look into a giant eyeball of an enormous whale fighting with a giant squid. And that's the point at which my grandfather would silently shuffle up to me and pounce on my back and sting me in the back and tap me in the back and go Psh! and inevitably I would be scared. So now you know my, my private nightmare. Um, okay, Mako sharks with a sea turtle. I'm not going to talk about it. Um, the Mako sharks are sculptures, but I think the sea turtle is, I don't remember. It might be real. Sea otter, he's in there. He's there somewhere. He's really cute, but the way that they, oh, there he is. He's cute though, um, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about these guys. These guys are... Dolphins hunting tuna in the Pacific. Dolphins are really whales. So we separate them and we say that they're dolphins, but for real, they are whales. Um, all dolphins are whales. Porpoises are whales. All of them are whales. They're all um, ocean mammals. They have to come up and breathe air. These guys are hunting the tuna that you see with them. And the danger here is that somewhere where we can't see there's probably a fishing boat. So um, in with them trying to feed, they need to worry about those nets that have been thrown into the water because we want to eat the tuna too. And like everybody loves sushi. So that's a, a thing that these dolphins constantly need to be avoiding are the human fishing nets that are also going after the same food that they want to eat. Let's see what's here. We're almost done. The torch is almost over. Harbor seals, they're so cute. I'm not gonna talk about them. They're really cute though. Can you get closer? Look at his little face. So cute, oh my God. So cute. These guys are puffins and razorbills and a bunch of other birds. They are hunting in the water off the coast of Canada in the Atlantic Ocean, so above us. And uh, they just dive right into the water and they pop back out. And that's how they do their hunting, their fishing. This guy is the last guy. I'm not going to talk about him too much because, um, you know, it's been enough. Um, they are sea lions and they live in the Pacific Northwest. So the opposite of us on the coast of, um, of the United States. I hope you like it. I hope that when quarantine is over, you can go visit this place. It's like a really great place. This is just one little part. You, you didn't even go upstairs. There's a tiny whale shark up there, like a baby. They got a black tip up there. It's another tuna. They show little videos here. You can sit underneath. Everybody sits here. Everybody lays on the floor in that part and sits here. And they do a thing where you can sleep in the museum. I think it's too expensive. But, like, I can pretend, right? All right, that's it. Have an awesome day.